Hello, everyone. We're back again. Uh, I'm joined by one of my friends, John McBon, who appeared on my first ever episode on this channel. Say hello, John. Hi, everyone. I am back. We are here to discuss some KOF again. Yes, and we are. It's going to be something interesting. What are we talking about this time for KOF, though? We're talking about dream matches, which are fan favorites, as you know, because mm -hmm. you talked them. Um, up uh, KOF 98 and uh, KOF 2002 for so long that I basically was like desperate to get them as soon as I could and you kindly gifted them to me so thank you for that. You're welcome for that and yeah like at least when it comes for fans at least what I've been seeing with opinions across the board it's always a toss-up between 98 and 2002. They are both excellent games and they're still considered some of the top like the top ones of the franchise. You'll have people debate oh 2002 is better or 98's better, but then when you factor in their UM versions, that kind of changes changes the story a little bit for which one is better at that point, since they both play which differently. One? Oh, go ahead. You, no, go on. I was going to say, which one do you prefer? For me, 2002 is still the special one, because that's the one that introduced me to KOF, and again, that's the one that kind of basically not only introduced me to SNK, but revived the love of fighting games. So O2 is, at least Vanilla O2 is the special one for me. That'll still remain one of the greats, but again, I'm torn between the unlimited match versions when it comes I to I prefer 2002 personally. Why O2? Sorry, if you said something, yeah. I had a tech problem. Oh, so why O2? Why O2? Uh, because I just like how the pace feels. Mm -hmm. I also like that Vanessa's a character in that game. I also uh, really like um, just the overall feel of it, the look of it, uh, the roster. Which is really big. I think it's still considered the biggest one in KOF. In KOF history. For O2 Unlimited how, match. How big was the roster for 2002 Unlimited match? If I remember correctly, I know it was like 60 something. Hang on. Let me just double check. I 66. It. Yep. 66. Pretty much everyone, with the exception of one character from Vanilla O2, returns. And which character does not return for those not in the know? K49. Who kind of made a return with 15, just <laughs> under a different name. Yeah, but oh, spoilers at least for this point. If you finish the Cronin storyline, it's Cronin's basically K49. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cronin is K49. He just goes by a different name. Also, McDougal. The hell. So I guess he's Scottish. I guess. <laughs> I guess so. But yeah, like going back to the idea of dream matches. Yeah, those are right now the only. There's technically three. We don't talk about one of them, though. Why do we not talk about one of them? Because I know why, but I don't think the average listener will. It it, it had development problems, and they needed to get something out the door. So it's just like, okay, how can we save time? Since we don't have like a lot of this ready. Okay, let's make it a dream match. We're With a very small roster. But then 13 was its redemption arc. Yeah, no, we were talking about King of Fighters 12. And then King of Fighters yep. 13 came out. And then that kind of basically... That should have been the true King of Fighters 12. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, for Dream Matches, they're kind of up in the air right now, wouldn't you say, in terms of their viability? It depends on who you ask for that stuff. I still think Dream Matches can be a thing. Dream Matches can still totally work. It just depends on what you do with it. Because I, I do like what 98 and 02 did, because it's basically, okay, here's here are your characters from these sagas. Let's just throw them into a game and let loose. That's Which it. Which is very fun. Mm -hmm. It may not have a lot of modes, but it's fun. Well, that's something that could be different when they do the next, when SNK decides to do the next dream match. Because I think that's going to be a deciding factor, modes. Because you, you, you think can still oh, have your three B, you can still have your three B three, and your one on ones, and and again online as well. But 
there should be more modes included with it to just keep the replay value. Yeah. Um, do you think 16 is going to be the next dream match? It has the potential to be, since they said Shune's arc ends with 15. Unless they decide to throw a curveball and say, hey, we got one more story to tell with this arc. What do you think would be the better route to go? Dream match or squeeze out one more story for Shune? I'd probably say go the dream match route. I would probably okay. say go the dream match route this time, because if, if they said the story is done, then the story is done. Mm -hmm. At that point. And then, with because with dream match, the nice thing with the dream match is that you're not, there aren't really any restrictions, if you think about it. Dead characters can make a comeback. Well, dead characters have made a comeback. <laughs> Which, sure. that was the biggest surprise with 15, but I mean, like, considering how the story worked, it, it made sense. It but did. we need more of those um, dead characters. Who are some dead characters you'd like to see return? Or that... I know fans want Gonets. I would also say... Chrysalid should make a return. There are others also. Like The, the one thing I believe was... I'd have to look at to it again, but... It's not just limited to KOF characters... They could bring back it characters includes. from other franchises, like, say, Art of Fighting, or even Fatal Fury, and bring them in... Into the modern era? Into the modern era, yeah. Or you, could, some that you, or like you could just bend space... Or you could just bend space and time and just bring them in. Yeah. Which is <laughs> now canonically a thing in King of Fighters, so... Apparently. Uh, yeah. Apparently. <laughs> you were gonna say, though? Uh, who are some characters you want to see come back, uh, specifically? Into the rock. I, I want to see characters return from 14. Give me back Team South America. Okay, and what about uh, from Art of Fighting, Fatal Fury, etc.? Well, if you were to go that route, I mean, you know, I gotta, I gotta pick Kasumi. Mm -hmm. I gotta pick Kasumi. I, I want to see her back. And as far and as I know, she hasn't been... We haven't seen a 3D rendition of Kasumi Toto either. So that could be something interesting. And she has a rivalry with uh, Yuri, correct? Anti Kyokujen, yes. Or no, more just Kyokujen. So you could say with Ryo as well. But I think it's more downplayed in KOF than it is in Art of Fighting. Okay. Um, Fatal so, Fury. Fatal Fury wise, like, I mean, there's a bunch of characters you could pull in. But, I mean, we could see some of that happen with the next Garo, with the fa next Fatal Fury and Garo games. But. That's that's more of a wait-and-see approach at that point. And that's a topic that we'll discuss on this podcast further as news develops. Mm -hmm. Which hopefully we'll get some info maybe this year or next year with it. It depends on how much SNK is ready to talk about with it. Because we just know it's been greenlit. So it's probably been in be development for a bit. I wouldn't be surprised. I said I wouldn't be surprised if we got some kind of trailer at the Game Awards. I could see that. Another thing I could see happening at Game Awards is, okay, let's start teasing Season 2. So we already know Shingo and Kim are there, but they could show... They could show maybe their 3D, the 3D models of them and say, hey, here's, here's what we're doing for Season 2. Here's an idea of stuff. Mm -hmm. How physics bending are you hoping Kim's pants will be? I mean, they got they got to be glorious. If they're not glorious, then I'll be like, "Why? What did you do to my boy? What did you do to yeah. the man of justice?" You mean like what they did with KOF fourteen and those pants physics? Yeah, something like that. I mean, KOF <laughs> KOF thirteen is kind of a pipe dream, I would say. But if they could make the pants work like that, that could be really dope. It would be. Um, but going back so, to what we were saying with dream matches, though. Yes, I was just about to transition into yes. that. Um, <laughs> Talk about things so, I like. So I watched uh, all of Thorgy's Arcade's uh, retrospective on the King of Fighters multiple times, mm -hmm. just because it's entertaining, and because I get new information each time I watch it. So, you know, worthwhile for that alone. He had an interesting idea for uh, Dream Matches, and we were discussing it off-air, actually, just so that you would be kind of prepared for this discussion. Mm-hmm. 
And that idea was uh, condense arcs down to one game, have season pass one be literally new characters that add to the story. And then season two is all your dream match options. Which that could be okay, but I feel like each a game each game should be its own thing. Treat it as its own entity. Like I like what they're doing with fifteen, and it should stay that way. You should treat yes, it like I agree. it's a story game. It's a story game. If you treat it as a dream match, you treat it as a dream match. But again, like we were talking about before, when you do a dream match, you have no restrictions. Whereas, like if you do a story game, you have some. You have a little bit of some restrictions because they should tie into the story somehow or with other characters. You didn't really see that though with 14's DLC though. How so? Because I was not really around for 14 and it's DLC, so I need some Well the DLC that was released for 14, it was just like eight it was just eight characters. It wasn't team based like you saw with 15. So they just put them in there, but they did have some interactions with some characters. But that's okay. basically it. Vanessa was DLC character uh, for 14, wasn't she? Yeah, she was. She was not base roster. Vanessa, Blue Mary, Rock, Yamazaki that are in 15, they were they were DLC for, for 14. It's only Blue Mary and Vanessa that are base for 15, and they still kept Rock and Yamazaki as DLC. How do you feel about that decision? It's it's the same argument you can make with, like, Biken. <laughs> They know, in, like, they, they're popular characters, and people will pay for them. Mm -hmm. If you, it's like Momiji and Dead or Alive. Mm -hmm. She's popular. She has never. She's popular, and she's never been a base roster. What if they did that for seven, for example? Like, let's say they the next DOA or the next the next game, and it has these DLC characters as base characters. Would that be? A I'd shock? be very happy. I'd be happy, but shocked at the same time. Be like you're. Because we've seen what the business practice is with them before, but that's something different entirely when it comes to that. Yeah. But I would say if you were to go make a dream match, you still do at least maybe two two story arcs or something. Two story arcs or three, depending on the time and allocation they have. And then you make your next one a dream match because you basically should treat a dream match as a greatest hits. Of I agree. But you also, with that point, you can make adjustments to dream matches where adjust the roster, like bring back the greatest hits teams, bring back the well-known teams, because you shouldn't have to stick with the teams that were made in the Definitely. other ones, but you would have to do that for sure. Like, let's say if you do KOF 16, who does Shunei and Mei Ten couldn't team up with? Do you bring back Tung Fu Rei and bring back the China team? Or do you have Isla there and you make a new team, as an example? Because Benny Maru is not going to be there. I think that bring back Team China and then for the next game make Isla teamed up with uh, Shune because, you know, it's kind of indicated that she might have a crush on him. Indicated with that, yeah. If, that's also if they decide to bring Shune and Isla for the next story arc. I could definitely see them bringing them both back. Well, Shune is not the most popular character of all time. Mm -hmm. He has his following, and yeah. Isla has developed a huge cult following since being released. Which is interesting, just because of, like, it's it's mostly down to design. It, Shune's design, at least visually, is not maybe... is one of the most messy. But you look at Isla's, and it almost seems kind of the same. But yet but people are more... it feels intentional with, with her. Yes. Whereas... Because she feels like she fits the street punk aesthetic that they seem to be going for. At least with what they were At going least... for and how she was raised, yes. Yeah. But I would um... say, if for teams, though, like, if you were to do it for 16, you basically bring back Tung Fu Rei, you make the China team from 14, and then you just keep the Rivals team from KOF 15. The same. Yeah, keep it the same. Because that way mm -hmm. Benny Maru's free, and then you can bring Goro back, and then you have Team Japan at that point. Which is a fan favorite, and that's kind of what Dream Matches are all about, is like giving fan service, but not the other kind of fan service. But then you have to figure out other things too, so it's just like, okay, so if that happens, that means the Sacred Treasures team is out. Because I know Iori would they, would, they would bring back Mature and Vice and bring back the Yagami team. Where does Shizuru I go? 
Uh, okay, what are some options, do you think, for that? Well, you could do, at least looking back at all the rosters and stuff, for example, you could do my King, and Chizuru. That's a women's fighting team. Then you could put Yuri with Ryo and Robert. That makes the art of fighting team. But then what if you want to bring Takuma back? Uh, then you could go the Masters route. But then Hydran has to be out of the rivals team. Ah. So you see where yeah. kind of these things have to... Mm -hmm. You have to balance some stuff out. Because the Masters team, if I remember correctly, from O2UM was Hydern, Takuma, and Chen, right? I think so, yeah. So that means you Chen gave me an idea, though. We soldiers. should, next week or something, we should record an episode of the podcast where mm -hmm. we uh, build a roster for KOF 16 if it's a dream match. And just like look at teams and come up with ideas for it. Because there are a couple of I have in mind that you could do. But then again, like we're just talking official teams. We, these are yeah. just official teams, but you can still make, like, for example, the Sacred Treasures team. You can still mm -hmm. do that. It's just going to be a special edit team. Which is example. a big part of King of Fighters history in general. Yeah, because well, the Sacred Treasures team has always been an edit team. It isn't until... they've never an official entry into a tournament until this one. Mm -hmm. But yet the Sacred Treasures team always was an essential part of the Orochi saga. Yeah. So, there are ways around it. Because, I mean, you can put the characters in. It's just which characters do you bring. But I would say if And anything, how big do you make the roster as well? You, you gotta go big or go home. I would say, if anything, make it 52. I'd say that's the base for a Dream Match game. Excluding DLC that will obviously come with it. Yeah, because right now, at least at this point in time, when Team Samurai comes out for 15... That roster will be up close to being as big as 14's with the DLC characters. How many characters did 14 have in total? 50. Base. Which is with DLC, huge. it's 58. With DLC, which it's is 58, huge. yeah, which is big. Because 13, at least 15, is 39 out of the box. Mm -hmm. But you have 13 DLC characters, that makes it 52. Which is just astronomical and amazing to me that's actually one of the things that like blew my mind and got me intimidated but interested in king of fighters because you have the possibilities and that's the other thing i liked with k i like with kof too is just you can still do 1v1 fights like i'm glad they still have that there as a thing but it's just team dynamics like who do you like playing where do you place them and how will you make it work and you've noticed that I'm always trying to pick your brains on this topic. Mm -hmm. And there's, and to me, there's never a definitive answer for it because there's too, there's so many permutations when it comes to what you can do. It's yep. almost limitless. It is almost like, limitless, which is what I like. Like now my team composition is Vanessa as point, Robert as mid, B Jenny as Your anchor. anchor. Whereas for mine, like when I play with it, uh, like and I try to interchange them because it's always good to mix it up. Because who knows, some might work better in other spots. But I would always, uh, for my team, it's at least for now, I would go with Chizuru. Still, she's still one of my favorites to play in that game. K Dash and Yuri, which is an interesting team in general because it's pretty balanced. But you've got two specialist characters in Chizuru and uh, K-Dash. Mm -hmm. Yuri is maybe a little bit of the oddball there, but who knows? Like, there are still other characters they want to get into with it. Because, I mean, the team compositions will probably change when Samurai comes out. Which is just a couple days from now. Yes. At the time of recording, anyways. It might be up by the time Team Sam is out. We don't really know because it'll all depend on Goto's editing schedule. Mm -hmm. Depends on when it gets out there. But I know Team Samurai is going to mix things up and then what they do for Season 2. And what they do for Season 2 with it as well. But I think the other thing, like going back for Dream Matches, is balance is something that's going to have to be kind of essential when it comes to doing a Dream Match. Because you don't want to make characters too broken or you don't want to have characters be dominant. Because that's one issue I have with KOF, is that once you find your magical three, 
or people find the magic some of the magical players that's all you're gonna see you're not gonna see much in terms of variety mm -hmm. when it comes to that because remember vanessa ralph terry team at the launch of yep. kof yep it's not fun no it's not fun and you even that's saw... actually kind of similar to like Yu-Gi-Oh and how its meta gets really stale after a while because it's always people meta decking via net decking mm -hmm. and building the same one to two decks. That's it. Which is what I'm hoping for. Like at least the meta did like balance did change things. But even when going into evil, you were still seeing some of the same characters. You were seeing a lot of Janets. You were seeing a lot of Kulas. You were seeing a lot of Cronins. Like it, the, mm -hmm. the final match in at Evil for KOF was a was a was a mirror match. What are some things that you think could be done to kind of balance it out, so that we have more diversity? I would just say, just make balance change. Like for balance changes, like make every character viable in one form or another. Like I'm not sure what's the best way to approach balance, but one thing I like I've seen with SNK stuff is. We've seen some nerfs, but they mostly do buffs for, like, weaker characters that make them more viable. Billy needs to Billy get and a... Ramon. They... Billy and Ramon. They, they, they need it badly. Yeah, they because they butchered, they butchered Billy. Yeah, and I know they did that to Ramon as well, because I know Ramon apparently was a very high pick in 14. Mm-hmm. So now he's at the bottom tier. Like, they did fix up Whip a bit. So whip is a bit better, but I still think her damage output, personally, needs to be higher. Yeah, and she's a hard character to use. So, mm -hmm. like, her damage should be, by default, that much higher to compensate for the learning curve. At least I think so. Mm -hmm. Because I like playing whip a bit, but again, yeah, she is tough. But we even saw some characters that just got buffed to, like, nuts. Like, Chizuru is now considered top tier. Yashiro, I, Yashiro is also considered top tier too, which is kind of nuts. Which version of Yashiro? Because there's two now. The current uh, standard Yashiro. I can't speak for the Orochi variants yet because I haven't spent too much time with Orochi variants, but I do think priority should be heightened a little bit personally for Chris and Shermi. Mm -hmm. At least they're Make them variants. quicker, right? A little bit quicker, yeah. Because Chris's game is dominated by speed. Like, that's his thing. Mm hmm. And I don't know why, but for me personally, Orochi Chris feels a little bit slower in in 15. That's an interesting change. So, uh, how would you handle dream matches? Like, how would you set them up? Again, like I said before, we treat it as a greatest hit. So you bring back, like, you know, fan favorite teams of the franchise, but you also incorporate stuff from 14 and 15, those teams, and you bring them in. So, as mm -hmm. I said, I'd want to see Team South America come back. I would want to see some form of the Another World team come back in and, like, bring back a lot of the new characters, but you can also make new teams with them, too. Like, for Which example... Which could be a lot of fun. Like, one example of that would be, like, say, Team Southtown. You bring back Team Southtown from KOF 15... You could bring that back in for sure, but I would say you make a new team with Luong and Hein, and then you need a third character for that. So you could make a new character for the Dream Match or find someone that fits in with them. So that kind of brings me to a point where I think they could do with Dream Matches. I think that what they should do is use Dream Matches as a way to tease the next arc, introduce characters who are going to be important to it, like how Street Fighter V did with the end of Luke, because Luke was the last DLC character for V, which is he's a main he's a main role in apparently Street Fighter VI. Do something yeah, like that. that. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. That could be an idea, like give an idea of where hey the future of the franchise is going, what we could be teasing for the next arc. Or exactly. Next also, with Dream Matches, I'd like to see them introduce one of the new mechanics that's going to appear in the future arc. That could be something. Like, mechanics could be something I, like, cool. Like, make that a selling point of the Dream Match. Make it a teaser for the next arc in general. But you still want to incorporate everything you've done in the last two games. One thing oh, I would... Oh, definitely. I think one thing because... could be interesting 
if they were to do something is bring back something from 98 ultimate match which is you when you make a team you pick the mode of how you want your meter and movement to work okay i like that idea because you play we played a little bit of 98 ultimate match yeah and you saw there was like the advanced and extra modes right yes yeah do you something to like fiddle that. around with them a little bit yeah mess around with it because they play differently i'd want to see something like that for a dream match you incorporate like bring back extra mode bring back extra mode and you incorporate have that as a mode you have the standard mode that kof is used in like say 15 but then you also include an ultimate mode or an or a custom mode where you can pick and choose stuff keep mm -hmm. it simple but i think something like that would be cool because that way it opens up player options. Definitely. And I like that idea because then you can have like really fresh metas online when you're playing with your friends. You can set up custom lobbies to have custom rule sets and do custom tournaments that way. The only thing is, again, like we're saying, just make sure like the balance is good. Because you don't want to make yeah. like, one mode powerful than the other. Because mm -hmm. then it's just like, okay, everybody just picks this and then does nothing else. Yeah. But going off uh, with that for X for like at least for Dream Match stuff, like modes is another one. There one thing I would love to see as a mode, not just in Dream Match for King of Fighters, but actually fighting games going forward, online survival mode. What do you mean by that? Like online survival mode? Like say you're is it just like an endless string of people you're fighting online or Yep. That's exactly it. What if you could incorporate that as another idea? So, like, you do, you have uh, online survival mode, but you can take that offline, and then you could just download like players' ghost profiles, and just do yeah. like that as a survival mode. I think... that would be another cool option. Because Samurai Showdown 2019 had an idea where you could download players' ghosts, like ghost and profiles, practice. and practice with them. But the ghost thing was cool, but it's just. I feel like a lot of those profiles players were just doing the same things over and over again. Mm -hmm. I'd want to see something like that return. That could be cool. But yeah, like a survival mode would be neat. Again, in-depth training mode would be cool. On top of time trials, your mission modes. Speaking of training modes, you know how Skullgirls has the uh, mini games to teach players how to do it? That should be something. That should be something to be considered, definitely. I think that King of Fighters would actually be pretty excellent in that, because we know Terry's obsessed with basketball. Mm-hmm. Have Terry throwing out basketballs as a training mode for projectiles. Actually, you know there's a character in KOF that does that. Yes. From the uh... American sports team. Yeah, let's just dunk on him and make him the training meme. Bring bring back the American sports team and just have them as like your training group. It's just like, all right, here, I'm going to teach you how to deal with projectiles as basketballs. And then you could have another one like, like here, I'm just going to keep charging you how to block it or how to counter it. There you go. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Yep. So you can yep. incorporate that with other characters or like Rio, for example, how to use parries because Rio can do parry stuff. Also, they could have, like, a dedicated mode uh, for charge characters, and you could use Ash and Leona as that one. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the minigame would be, but you could do something like that. One personal thing I would love to see incorporated, whether it would be into story mode, like a story mode KOF or even dream matches, more of the, more of the character interactions. Yes, that mm -hmm. definitely... You got those seldomly in 14 and 15, which I liked. I wonder how long, though, it would take to do that for every character. And if you have, like, say, 60 characters, for example, yeah, that could take a while. I imagine SNK would have to contract that out to a studio that's div uh, just focused on game cinematics. On game cinematics and stuff. That could be, that's an idea. But again, yeah, we're just forward thinking or, like, just spitting out ideas with it. But the mm -hmm. other things that have to be done, since we're seeing this happen now with fighting games, we still need the good online play, because 15's online is actually pretty solid. It is. 15's uh, online it is actually, solid, yeah. 
it actually feels like I'm playing against an AI mm -hmm. most of the time. Depending on conditions, yeah, definitely. Online, yeah, it works really well. And I'm glad to see, I'm thinking that kind of online's, I think it was confirmed that online is going into Samurai Showdown. So we're going to be messing around with that, obviously, when it comes out. Which I'm excited about. And then the next thing is, it's confirmed for next year, but I want crossplay to work well. I think it will. I think it'll have some teething issues for the first couple of weeks mm -hmm. because let's face it, that's pretty ambitious because crossplay is still not standardized in any ga game of any medium. So uh, you're seeing it implemented more and more throughout. Like Call of Duty is leading that charge with it for sure. Fortnite obviously leads the charge with it. You're seeing it in shooters and say even some driving games or like other games like Rocket League. We're starting to see yeah. it more now, but. It needs to be it's still not standard. yeah it's still not standardized and it's still kind of the janky wild west it's almost like uh we're going forward but we're also going back to when game design was i guess not as concrete and not as you know what i mean mm -hmm. but we'll have to see because right now at least yeah. when it comes for fighting games when it comes to that point Capcom's doing it with Street Fighter 6, and we know Ark's implementing that into Guilty Gear Strive, so we're gonna have to see how those play out. Mm -hmm. For sure, at least I just, we're talking from big I, studios for now. I just hope it's not as clunky as how Mortal Kombat 11 handles it. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see, but I imagine they could use, that could be used as like a baseline, and then it just improves from there. So Netherrealm can improve upon that for the next MK or Injustice. Yep. And I'm you know, hoping Tekken, that would have... Tekken does that. Tekken does crossplay. I'm hoping it does. I'm imagining that that's the next big announcement that uh, we're going to get for Tekken 8. Mm -hmm. I imagine they're just going to be like, yep, we got crossplay. We got crossplay. We have rollback netcode, or we have a better version of rollback netcode now mm -hmm. for Tekken. Which I need to go back and play Tekken Seven because apparently they've implement they've updated their netcode a bit. I haven't played uh, Tekken Seven online yet. I've just been playing against the arcade dummies. Mm -hmm. Well, yep. not dummies, but AI. AIs. But yeah, we'll have yeah. to try out Tekken at some point. But I'm also hoping, like with SNK, for example, that they're incorporating not only this stuff, like for KOF Fifteen, but this also goes into all of their games going forward. So the next Garo, the next KOF whatever they decide to work on next. I think that'll happen. And you'll, we'll just see improvements on it time over time over time. Yeah. But with Dream um, stuff, again, going back to that again, since we, we love to diverge onto side topics a lot here. <laughs> which is totally fine. Yeah. It's actually pretty fun, and mm -hmm. I encourage it, as you've probably noticed. Yeah, um, yeah for Dream Match stuff, again, I just think, yeah, no, they have to incorporate like the stuff like the online good crossplay, a good amount of modes, and a solid roster. Just as long as it has good value to it, but also shows mm. some good support as well in the long run. Which, which at least actually they brings are doing, me... Which they are doing with 15, and I'm glad they're doing it. Me too. Which brings me to kind of a topic I wanted to discuss regarding Dream Matches. How do you price it? You still... I would say price it like they've, like they've done before. It Which could is... still be treated as a full release. Like, uh, it just depends. Like, you gotta have the content there. That's the thing. Mm. But Personally, I'm I'd like to implement... see them... Gone? Personally, I'd like to see them release it either at a lower price point than a full King of Fighters game. Like, what, $10 Not much... cheaper? Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. Just to indicate, hey, this one doesn't have a story mode, so... It's going to be more focused on different mode types that, you know, are kind of a harder sell for a lot of casual fighting game fans. Because think about it. How do most casual fighting game players tend to play? Press buttons. Okay, but beyond that, <laughs> what do they tend to look for in their modes. fighting game diet? Modes. Modes and, modes and story. Mm -hmm. So... I feel like, you know, jam pack it with modes, but also put it out at a lower price point because you won't have to spend as much as you would otherwise because it's not going to have the cinematics. 
Would it be crazy to incorporate a mode into KOF that makes it like Streets of Rage? Uh, explain. Side-scrolling brawler. That could be fun. Because, because I, didn't I, King I, of that, Fighters start out? Yes, at that's what I was going to bring up. The conceptual stage? That's what I was going to bring up. At a uh, conceptual stage, it was going to be something like that. So why not do something like a side-scrolling brawler, brawler with KOF characters? That would be a lot of fun, I think. I think it could be interesting. It could be a nice little mode to mess around with. Mm -hmm. My other kind of idea, though, for dream matches would be do the free-to-play model. That one's a little questionable for me when it comes to that stuff, because, like, free-to-play can be hit and miss and when it comes to that. But we mm -hmm. are seeing success with it, and you are seeing some form of success with it with, say, like, Rumbleverse and Multiverses. Also, for the first month of Virtua Fighter Five, that was insanely successful. Mm -hmm. And we know that Sega was doing that to kind of test the waters about future pricing like uh, structures for what they should do to bring back VF, which I yeah. would want to see VF actually return. If they do a free-to-play model, like I feel like it could be pulled off correctly. But the one thing with KOF, if you do a free-to-play model and you're doing a Dream roster, how many character the character things is going to be the one that raises the question? How many do you include? How do you rotate them? I would say give a base roster of 35 36 um have them on a rotation for every few months or you could do it like how ki introduced uh its roster rotation mm -hmm. would you do it would you do it as individual characters though or would you do it as teams i would do it as teams mm -hmm. okay uh, but, like, have it rotate every couple months to a couple weeks, whatever feels kind of right. But have it so that players who hop in day one get to keep the characters that they've been playing with from the get-go. Mm -hmm. Also, you could maybe include a, a pay mode a where... Pay model. I think they should include a pay model where, hey, you just want to unlock everything? Here you go. Pay this much, there you yep. go. Yep, that's what I was just about to say. So you could do because that. one thing that I think could really be imp like done to get in new blood to King of Fighters is doing something like that because let's face it, a lot of the people who play King of Fighters and SNK games in general are legacy players. Mm -hmm. You're seeing that you see that with Tekken as well. Because, yeah, if you've played it before, you already know what you're walking into, which I think that's something that could be changed, or if, but it would probably shake up the fan base a lot. Change do you think that everything. a shake-up needs to happen, or do you think that we're kind of in a good place and SNK's bringing in enough new blood that we don't have to really worry about it? I'd say it's it's got a good balance to it, but I feel like a shake-up could be interesting to see what happens. I don't know if they'll do it with KOF, but that could be something they do with Garou. What kind of shakeup would you like to see? Basically just change how characters work. Characters working change the feel a bit, because Street Fighter does that almost every iteration. Like there is still some legacies, like legacy play there with it, but it changes its mechanics and stuff enough to make it feel like something different. Mm-hmm. Um, who would be some characters that you feel are prime candidates for being changed up? In KOF? Yes. I know they did a little bit with them before. Like, they changed up Iori a bit, I remember, for KOF 13. Then they brought him back to his classic style. Okay. Uh, Iori would be one. Maybe do something for Kyo. For Kyo. Mess around with K-Dash a little bit as well, too. He's my favorite guy. He's one of my favorite guys to use. But I feel like that could be something interesting. How would you feel if they tried to change up Vanessa in terms of how she... Not necessarily how she plays, but maybe, like... Because, let's face it, she is a rushdown character uh, mm -hmm. with lots of speed. 
maybe try out a charge variant. Yeah, like do a charge variant for her, or an another one could be if you wanted to go maybe a little insane. Slow her down, but make the hits hit harder. Which would be in keeping with her animations. Mm -hmm. That could be something. Because I love that little detail where she's shaking your hands out after pulling off her super move. Yeah, you'd be like, oh, this hurts. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it adds character to her, and I, I always appreciated that touch. Because it's just like, yeah, no, this hurts. It, it, <laughs> it's not, it's... Don't think it doesn't. I just like Vanessa as a character in general because she's pretty unique in terms of fighting games. Mm -hmm. Because think about it. How many mature women characters can you think of off the top of your head in fighting games? Not too many. Like, maybe Luong could be kind of that, but she's also more of a flirtatious type. Yeah. King. Mm-hmm. King definitely is one for sure. Christy from Dead or Alive, maybe. Maybe you you could say you could say that. Uh, Chun Li. Yeah, I mean, there's not that many. There's probably some we're missing. There's probably some that we are yeah. missing that we just can't think of. But there's got to be more out there. But it's pretty noteworthy when they do happen because there's so few of them mm -hmm. and, and snk did lead the way with vanessa in terms of that whole archetype at least with that in in kof yeah and king you could say the same thing in art of fighting especially when you first see if i remember when you first see king for the first time in art of fighting you would just assume king is a guy yeah but then you defeat king and then you realize oh wait a second king's a girl Yep. <laughs> it's no different I than imagine... the reveal with Samus from Metroid. I imagine that it was just as shocking with King when it first first happened and it was I bet a lot of people were, were like, What? <laughs> like, wait, this is not what I expected, right? Yeah. And what? I think it's interesting how they've evolved King's design over the years because they always kept her design kinda of masculine. Until mm -hmm. very recently, where they've started to incorporate some more feminine traits into her design. And it helps out. It definitely helps out for her. Because it adds character mm -hmm. to her. And that's and that's the one thing I like with KOF in terms of their characters. Even if some even if some may look seem kind of like bland and stuff, but they are all interesting and unique in their own rights. That makes them stand out. Yep. And I want to see that continue whenever they make, whenever they introduce new characters to the franchise, or even bring back characters from other franchises and put them into the series. This is actually something that would be cool to see, since we finally have Team Samurai now in this game. Why not do something like that for Last Blade? A Last Blade reboot could be interesting. I've never played any of the Last Blade games. I think you have though. I've only played the Last Blade two. But I feel like that's another thing you could do with a dream match game. Like, say, if you want to incorporate special other characters from SNK's franchises. Mm -hmm. Like, here's one. Team Metal Slug. Who would you include on that one? Marco, Fio, and... Hang on, I, I, keep, forgetting, I keep forgetting one of their names. But I would say definitely, like, for that, bring in Team Metal... Put in Team Metal Slug. I know fans have been asking for a Team Metal Slug for a long time. I am actually kind of excited to try out Metal Slug for the first time in the future. Because yeah. I've never gotten a chance to play it, and yeah. I've never really played that genre either. Yeah, Marco, Fio, and I'd say... You could choose either Tarma, Tarma or Eri, but I know Fio is considered a fan favorite among, among players. Mm -hmm. How would they fight? With guns. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know weapons Aaron. are going to be on the table now. We know weapons are on the table. Which could lead for some interesting specials and supers. Yeah. Definitely. Or even just basic movesets, because we know Blue Mary's got her taser. 
Yeah, Blue Mary's got her taser, and basically Leona uses her earrings. Yep. But you know, I I definitely think like that could be something you could do with uh with a dream match. You could have it link, because they do do nods to other franchises in their games. Because I mean, the Sahara stage in fifteen is basically a metal slug stage. You have, yep. you basically have the the hostages there. You you have the hostages there, and you also have it was I I think it was Rumi in the in the background as well. I don't know that character. She's one of the support characters in Metal Slug. Okay. But no, I feel like something like that could happen, definitely, for sure. But the future the future will have to be determined. Right now, we just know they're working on a new Garo, but I would definitely love to see another KO lap, because I feel like SNK is in a good spot to take advantage of that stuff. Maybe with KOF 16, they could uh, have the tagline be, uh, instead of shatter your expectations, the future is yet to be determined, or something like that. Bring You could bring back the Neo Geo line, the future is now. That would be cool. Tie that in. And, and maybe they could like have a graphics mode where it emulates a Neo Geo. Go back to like that that era of arcade graphics. That could be something, definitely for sure. You know that would ha that's actually an interesting idea for what they could do with a dream match game because they could like fool around with different era filters. That's definitely and be like, another idea. Hey, if this game came out in this era, here's what it might have looked like. Because we know people are hearkening back for that style of KOF thirteen even though it costs the company. Yeah, though it's now becoming more viable because look at what Arc Systems Works does. Yeah, it could definitely be done. Mm-hmm. It could definitely be done. But with that, I'm it's... curious, for KOF 16, do you want it to kind of maintain the same speed that it's got right now, speed it up a little bit, slow it down? What would you like? I say keep it the same. Keep, it, keep the speed where it's at because... I think this is this is the right pace of what KOF needs to be. You don't want to have it too fast because I feel like then you could lose you could lose track of stuff personally. And you know what? KOF 15 is actually part of why I got into 2D fighters because I like its pace. Mm -hmm. It's something it's you're not used too to. fast. It's not too fast and it's not too slow. It kind of and it feels like it's kind of helping me out as a newer player at this speed. That's the one thing I liked with it too, yeah, because it seems like it crosses, it has that balance of speed, like, with... Because you're more used to 3D fighters. Yeah, which that. can either be a lot quicker or a lot slower. Mm -hmm. And this one, this one does it well. Mm -hmm. Like, KOF has done it well for all of their installments. Like, I don't think there's ever been one that's been insanely fast. They've all been Say... relatively good, but it's just like the flow of how things work is the thing that makes it different. I would say the fastest was probably 14. 14 definitely was pretty fast, I found. 15, 15 feels maybe a hair slower. But not but much. But it feels manageable. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see them increase the damage output just a little bit, because that's one thing that I find fun about Garou and uh, 98 and 2002, mm -hmm. is the hits feel like they're doing more. Definitely, because it it, mm -hmm. it feels it feels a little more visceral, I guess you could say, when it comes to that yeah. stuff. But I guess it definitely feels that way. So, is there anything else you kind of want from future dream matches, and how and any other ways you could see SNK handling them? I guess the thing would be more. I I would still say release it as a box product because that's that's the prop. I think that would be the best way to do it if they do experiment with a free to play model. Take take ideas of what's been done with like multiverses, rumbleverse, or even VF, and then go from there. I but dream matches. I would say the biggest thing is just let loose, just let loose with it. Bring back bring back characters that you know we haven't seen for a while, or Bailey, even ones please. That were, which one? 
May Lee, please. May Lee. Who knows? She could come in. May Lee for you. Alice for me. Alice and Kasumi for me. Like, Shingo's Alice here, is, so yeah. that's already one off my list. Alice is definitely on my list, and... You know, I would love to see her as a DLC option in 15, because I think that she could kind of sell just because. What She's if, got a very... What if it's hmm? crazy that uh, Shingo's team consists of Kasumi and Alice? That would be cool. Or Melee and Alice. That would be... I would say Melee is better with Kim. I would say, if anything, you bring back... Like, for example, for Kim, you could bring back one of his teams from 2001. You bring back Jun, and you bring Mei Li. There you go, you got a Kim cool. team. How would you feel if they bring back uh, Chang and Choi? You could do that, then you have the classic Korea team. At least if it's with Kim. Or, you just bring back the villains team. But I know people don't like Xanadu. <laughs> yeah, he's just too weird. But I mean, that could be a reason to add him in there, just because he's that weird. <laughs> Why not? True. But we'll have to see. No, I'm curious to see what they do with it. I'm, I'm excited for what's gonna happen with KOF in the future. Just make it fun. What do you think yep. they should do? Anything else you want to add to it? Um, I would like to see them maybe incorporate uh more things that you can do with meter. Mhm. Mm I'm not sure exactly what, but I found in Dead or Alive Five Last Round, for example. Being able to do power launchers into combos. That was a lot of fun. You used up a little bit of your super bar. Yep. And then you could launch your opponent super high and then it would either let you combo them or it would just do a whole bunch of damage when they bounced off the ground. So the idea of a meter system, like if they could adjust that. I'd be curious to see what they do with it. Who knows? They could also mess around with that stuff for balance purposes for... For the next installment. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anything else you want to say before we wrap up? That, thanks for having me. Hopefully yeah, no we problem. Can play some uh, more matches soon. Yes. Uh, do you want to plug anything in particular? Well, okay. At least for this, um, yeah, I'll just plug this standard stuff. I do stream on Twitch whenever I can, so you can check me out at twitch.tv slash John McVaughn. I also have the Twitter feeds and try to keep those updated. And some YouTube stuff, which we will include, I believe, in the description box. The description box below this, correct? Yep. Along and you yours. can also catch me on Twitch.tv. It's uh, Twitch.tv slash Lee for ninety, and then my links to Instagram, Twitter, and Discord will be below. Thanks again for joining me, John. No problem, everybody. I hope you have a good day. Yep. See you later.